just uh, sitting here in hotel in downtown Manila waiting for my wife to come back from some shopping. Um, first chance I've more or less gotten on this trip to sit here and make a video. Um, something that's rather interested me um, of late, simply because of the reading that I've been doing, is the whole idea of dystopia. Now, here in Manila, there's a lot of poverty, a lot of pollution, a lot of uh, people that have a style of living that is less than ideal, shall we say. And having just finished reading Neuromancer again, after quite a number of years, the first time I read it, you, know, you get that sort of fascinated sense of, gee, wouldn't it be neat to kind of live in a dystopia? Um, but the more that I think about it, the more that I come to the conclusion that a dystopia really isn't possible, simply because a dystopia assumes that society in general has become corrupted, that pretty much everybody yeah, is aware of the fact that they're, they're living in a society that's rotting from the inside out, outside in, maybe, I don't know. And that uh, people are aware that things have gone bad and most people have become corrupted by that realization. Well, I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, you walk around downtown Manila, you walk around the northern suburbs like Tondo and places like and they do indeed look fairly dystopian for some someone from the West. But to people who live there, uh, it's just it's home. It's the place that they, they exist in. There are plenty of people that you see who are living a very bad existence, I suppose. Because yeah, picking garbage for a living, prostitutes, um, some of them that are way too young. People who are addicted, obviously addicted. I, just the other day I saw a junkie passed out in the street. Um, he just let his uh, rubber band thingy fall down and you can see the big callus on his arm and he's laying there in the sunlight. Okay. Um, you, you could really, you could actually see that in Toronto or my city if you wanted to. You could see that in any big western city. Um, but when you mix in pollution and overcrowding and poverty and the extreme corruption of the society, is sort of think, okay, if there is a dystopia in our world, this is getting there. But it isn't really, because side by side with all of this uh, are probably far more people who are just living their lives. I've mentioned on numerous occasions that the Filipinos are pretty much an, an irrepressible people. Like, of all the people that I've come into contact with, nothing will convince them that life is bad. Um, I understand that they are, they are as nuanced as anyone else is, but by and large, the Filipino mindset is extremely positive, um, almost to a fault, where they often say that we're so optimistic that we never fix anything, and that's why our country is a bit of a mess, simply because we think it'll just take care of itself. Optimism becomes a vice. But the point that I'm trying to make here is, um, when you think of stories like Neuromancer, that were read as uh, sort of techno drug with genetic dystopia, something along the lines of Blade Runner, uh, or any of the other dystopias that we see in science fiction, either in literature or in movies or on TV, it, there's some sort of overall corruption that seems to have snuck into society in general. But it doesn't work that way in real society. In real society, there's alongside of all there are huge numbers of people who exercise restraint, who have a positive view about their position in life, or at least their relative position in life. Um, things aren't ideal, but they could be worse. And I think that with hard work, grit, self-discipline, even a little bit of self-discipline and perseverance, things will get better. Um, in a strange kind of sense, it, it's a bit disappointing. As I say, the dystopian literature and dystopian um, movies have quite a fascination for me. I like the idea of thinking uh, that one is living in a completely decadent society. But I don't think that such a thing is possible. Um, respectability and uh, optimism and um, self-restraint are simply, they seem to be too much a constant in human society for a real dystopia ever to come about. 
I know some people in, in the West, in Canada, who believe that we live in a dystopia in Canada, in the West. Well, compared to how most people live just out of there in the streets of Manila, and I don't mean in the streets, I mean even the respectable, a lot of the respectable sort of upbeat people that I'm talking about, compared to how they live, there's no way I live in a dystopia. Um, but a lot of, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but some people that I do know that live in Canada believe that Canadian society is dystopian. I don't believe that it is. And if Canadian society is dystopian, what does that say about this? But if this is dystopian, how do you explain the guy running the coffee, sh the, the, the coffee shop down on the street just below my hotel here, who puts in a long work day every day and um, he's, got, he's got his kids running around the shop floor and uh, um, seems to get on well with his clients and uh, you know, seems to think that doing this is worthwhile, even though he's not exactly living uh, a life of prosperity, uh, even a life of what we would consider respectable poverty in the West. But to him, I guess, he's simply living his life. He's neither living in a dystopia nor a utopia. He probably says, well, I have certain advantages here. I'm going to press them. I'm going to make sure that uh, my kids do better than I did, or at least as well as I did, and that there's no point in putting a negative spin on the way that things are here, even though I would love to move to a richer place. I doubt that this guy believes that he's living in a, a society that's on its last legs. You may have met people in Canada or the U.S. Uh, who believe that society is just about that close to suddenly going right down the tubes. Funny how that works, eh? that there's always somebody who seems to actually want to believe that. Why are there so many people that do live in what me, a spoiled Westerner, would consider a dystopia? Who don't see it that way at all? Um, as I say, I'm in the midst of what I consider to be the most irrepressible, upbeat people I've ever come across. By our standards, they do live in a dystopia. They don't think so. <laughs> Why not? Thank you.